Hi everyone, I'm Trish and welcome to my women's online Bible study. Today we are covering Exodus chapters 4 through 6, so let's say a short prayer and dive right in. Heavenly Father, please give me the clarity to speak and the hearer the ear to hear. Please impart on us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of all your ways that we may walk upright before you. Help us to share your word uh, in truth and clarity with others until Jesus returns. And in your son's name, I pray. Amen. Okay, so um, I am reading from the New King James Version. So grab your Bibles or um, if you're reading along um, in the app on your phone, uh, Exodus 4. Then Moses answered and said, But suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, The Lord has not appeared to you. So the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? He said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses fled from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Furthermore, the Lord said to him, Now put your hand in your bosom. And he put his hand in his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like snow. And he said, Put your hand in your bosom again. So he put his hand in his bosom again and drew it out of his bosom. And behold, it was restored like his other flesh. Then it will be, if they do not believe you, nor heed the message of the first sign, that they may believe the message of the latter sign. And it shall be, if they do not believe even these two signs, or listen to your voice, and you shall take water from the river and pour it on the dry land. The water which you take from the river will become blood on the dry land. Then Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant. But I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. So the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have not I, the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. But he said, O oh my Lord, please send me, uh, send by the hand of whomever else you may send. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite, the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well. And look, he is also coming out to meet you. When he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. Now you shall speak to him and put uh, the words in his mouth. And I will be with your mouth and with his mouth. And I will teach you what you shall do. So he shall be your spokesman to the people. And he himself shall be as a mouth for you. And you shall be to him as God. And you shall take this rod in your hand with which you shall do the signs. So Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Please let me go and return to my brethren who are in Egypt and see whether they are still alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. Now the Lord uh, said to Moses in Midian, Go, return to Egypt, for all the men who sought your life are dead. Then Moses took his wife and his sons and set them on a donkey, and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. And the Lord said to Moses, when you go back to Egypt, see that you do all these wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in your hand, but I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. So I say to you, let my son go that he may serve me. But if you refuse to let him go, indeed, I will kill your son, your firstborn. And it came to pass on the way at the encampment that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at Moses' feet and said, Surely you are a husband of blood to me. So he let him go. Then she said, You are a husband of blood because of the circumcision. And the Lord said to Aaron, Go in the wilderness to meet Moses. So he went and met him on the mountain of God and kissed him. So Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord who had sent him and all the signs uh, which he had commanded him. Then Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. And Aaron spoke all the words with which the Lord has spoken to Moses. Then he did the signs in the sight of the people, so the people believed. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel and that he had looked on their affliction, then they bowed their heads in worship. Exodus 5, 
Afterwards, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, nor will I let Israel go. So they said, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please let us go three days' journey into the desert and sacrifice to the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. Then the king of Egypt said to, to them, Moses and Aaron, why do you take the people from their work? Get back to your labor. And Pharaoh said, look, the people of the land are many now, and you make them rest from their labor. So, that, so the same day, Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters of the people and their officers saying, you shall no longer give the people straw to make brick as before. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. And you shall lay on them the quota of bricks with which... Uh, which which they made before. You shall not reduce it, for they are idle. Therefore, they cry out, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let more work be laid on the men, that they may labor in it, and let them not regard false words. And the taskmasters of the people and their officers went out and spoke to the people, saying, Thus says Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go get yourself straw where you can find it, yet none of your works will be reduced. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw. And the taskmasters forced them to hurry, saying, Fulfill your work, your daily quota, as when there was straw. Also the officers of the children of Israel, whom Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten and were asked, Why have you not fulfilled your task in making brick both yesterday and today as before? And the officers of the children of Israel came and cried out to Pharaoh, saying, Why are you dealing thus with your servants? There is no straw given to your servants, and they say to us, Make brick. And indeed, your servants are beaten, but the fault is in your own people. But he said, You are idle, idle. Therefore, you say, Let us go and sacrifice to the Lord. Therefore, go now and work, for no straw shall be given you. Yet you, you shall deliver the quota of bricks. And the officers of the children of Israel saw that they were in trouble after it, after it was said, You shall not reduce any bricks from your daily quota. Then as they came out from Pharaoh, they met Moses and Aaron who stood there to meet them. And they said to them, Let the Lord look on you and judge, because you have made us abhorrent in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants to put a sword in their hand to kill us. So Moses returned to the Lord and said, Lord, why have you brought trouble on this people? Why is it you have sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to this people. Neither have you delivered your people at all. Exodus 6. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand he will let them go. And with a strong hand he will drive them out of, this land, out of his land. And God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But, my, but by my name, Lord, I was not known to them. I have also est established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, pilgrimage in which they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians kept in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. Therefore, say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out of from under the burden of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you as my people and I will be your God. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God who brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you into the land with which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I will give to you as a heritage. I am the Lord. So Moses spoke thus to the children of Israel, but they did not heed Moses because of anguish of spirit and cruel bondage. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, go in, tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to let the children of Israel go out of his land. And Moses spoke before the Lord saying, the children of Israel have not heeded me. How then shall Pharaoh heed me? For I am of uncircumcised lips. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and gave them a command for the children of Israel and for Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. These are the heads of their father's houses, the sons of Reuben. The firstborn of Israel were Hanuk, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. These are the families of Reuben. And the sons of Simeon were Jamuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jashin, Zohar, and Shaul, the son, the son of a Canaanite woman. 
These are the families of Simeon. These are the names of the sons of Levi according to their generation. Gershom, Kohath, and Memori. Uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, Merari. And the years of the life of Levi were 137. The sons of Gershom were, Li Gershom were Libni and Shimei, according to their families. And the sons of Kohath were Amran, Ishar, Hebron, and Uziel. And the years of the life of Kohath were 133. The sons of Merari were Mal, uh, Mal, Mali and Mushai. These are the families of Levi, according to their generations. Now Amran took for himself Joshabed, his father's sister, his wife, and she bore him Aaron and Moses. And the years of the life of Amran were 137. The sons of Ishhar were Kor, uh, Korah, Nephag, and uh, Zikari. No, Zikri. Right, okay. And the sons of Uziel were Mishael, Elzaphan, and uh, Zithri. Aaron took for himself Leshabed, daughter of Amminadab, sister of Nashon, as wife, and she bore him Nadab, Elihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. And the sons of Korah were Ashur, Elkanah, El El and Abashash. These are the families of the Korites. Eleazar, son, El Aaron's son, took for himself uh, one of the daughters of Pethuel as wife, and she bore him Phineas. These are the heads of the father's houses of the Levites, according to their families. These are the same Aaron and Moses to whom the Lord said, Bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, according to their armies. These are the ones who spoke to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring out the children of Israel from Egypt. These are the same Moses and Aaron. And it came to pass in the, uh, on the day the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, that the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I am the Lord. Speak to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, all that I say to you. But Moses said before the Lord, Behold, I am of, of uncircumcised lips, and how shall Pharaoh heed me? Heavenly Father, bless the reading of your word. Let it fill us until we are able to eat of it again. <laughs> I I promised you guys that um, reading through the New King James Version was going to be better for me and that I was not going to be stumbling over some of these names, but I just need to freshen up a little bit on um, my uh, old Israelite uh, name uh, enunciations, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> if you're if you're just here for the read through, thank you for coming to stumble and read through scripture with me, and I really appreciate it. Uh, and I hope to see you again next time. And if you are here for more in depth Bible study, stick around, and we'll dive right in. Okay, so um, Genesis four begins with then Moses answer. So it's indicating that it is a continuous, um, it's a continuous of a conversation that later took place in. Um, uh, that previously, sorry, that previously uh, took place in chapter three. So uh, Moses is currently still at the burning bush speaking with the Lord. Um, and he is still trying to get out of this mission that the Lord is sending him on uh, by telling, going to tell Pharaoh to let his people go. So uh, the first time the Lord tells him uh, in three, in, in uh, chapter three, verse 11, Moses says, but who am I to go and tell? Pharaoh to let my people go. The second time, uh, Moses says, well, who are you? And in uh, uh, Exodus 3 and 13, the, the second time he says, well, who are you? Who, who's sending me? <laughs> and so, um, and now uh, he's just blatantly saying, well, suppose they, they just not going to believe me. They just not, they're, they, they're not going to believe me. So the Lord uh, tells, uh, turns his rod, Moses rod, has a rod in his hand into a snake. Uh, and then uh, he turns his skin leprous. And then again, he turns water into blood. So he gives them these three signs to go back and to tell, uh, uh, to show the children of Israel um, uh that the Lord has indeed sent them. He's heard his, their cry and he's going to uh, let them go. So that is uh, four uh, verses one through nine. Um, so moving on to four, 10 through 17. Uh, Moses is, of course, still making excuses because he just doesn't want to do this. Um, uh, 
but the Lord's not having it. So he's like, um, I'm, I, I don't speak well, Lord. And uh, since you start speaking to me, you, it, my speech literally hasn't improved. <laughs> so the Lord is like, who makes the deaf, the, the mute, the blind. So uh, the Lord creates uh, people uh, who come to us as disabled people. Uh, it's not a curse. It's mentioned here. The Lord said he creates them that way. Uh, I don't want to go off into that because it's taken away Definitely from Definitely want to get back on topic. Um, so Moses is saying that he doesn't speak well. The Lord is saying, your brother Aaron speaks well. I want you to tell him what I'm going to tell you. And Aaron will um, convey the message to Pharaoh. And so uh, that is 10 through 17. Moving on to verses 18 through 20. So Moses goes back. He tells his father-in-law that he is leaving. Um, verse 20 says, sons, a plural with an S. So that is indicating that uh, Eliezer has been born. Uh, so completing Moses' two sons. Uh, we find out his name later on in scripture when we get there. Um, but it's, it's Eliezer. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So they get ready to go. His wife and two sons. Oh, his, his name is actually meant, I, I wrote it. It's mentioned in uh, Exodus 18 and 4. So Moses takes his wife and his sons and they are um, on their way to head back to Egypt. Verses 21 through 23 of chapter 4. Uh, God reveals to Moses to do all the signs that and that he will harden Pharaoh's heart. So when God says that he will harden his heart, that just means that he will leave um, Pharaoh up to the uh, the decisions of his own heart. So the God will remove himself uh, of kindness from him to where, um, you know how the spirit kind of convicts you when you're doing something wrong and you feel bad for it. You know, the Holy Spirit convicts you. So um, uh, to me, that that's him removing that from Pharaoh so that he doesn't feel any type of way about um what he's about he tells to say. Moses to tell Pharaoh to let his people go. Uh, Israel is his firstborn. And if you don't, then I will kill your firstborn if you don't let my people go. So then uh, we jump down to verses 24 through 26, uh, where uh, Mo uh, God has instituted circumcision on, uh, um, on, on males. Um, I think it's eight days and above, um, if I'm not mistaken. We just covered it in Genesis. Um, so he's like, um, so at some point he has told Moses to circumcise his, his two sons. Uh, but Moses doesn't want to do it. And so God seeks to take his life on his way there. But Zipporah actually does this and she saves his life. And she tells him he's a, hu a husband of blood to her. Um, so Zipporah saves Moses at this point in time. Moving on to verses 27 through 31. The Lord sends Aaron to meet Moses. Moses tells Aaron the words to speak. They gather together the elders. Um, they perform the signs that the Lord uh, told Moses to perform. They are convinced and they worship the Lord. They are like, yay, you know, the Lord is going to let us go. Um, he has sent a deliverer. It's all happy and good news at the end of chapter four. Moving on to chapter five, they actually go to Pharaoh and uh, they tell uh, Pharaoh uh, what the Lord says to, to, to let them go. Uh, at this point in time, they're just asking to that Pharaoh let them go to the wilderness, a journey for three days, and that they may worship the Lord. Pharaoh is like, who is the Lord that I should let the people go? I, I think that the people has too much time on their hands. So therefore, instead of giving them straw, like we used to give them before, they should go and find their own straw to make the brick. The, the quota will be the same, but now they're going to have to find their own straw since they got enough time on their hands to go to the desert and worship the Lord. So Pharaoh makes it even harder. He beats the um, head taskmasters have, um, and uh, the children of Israel are crying out even harder because uh, they, they're now making their quota because they don't have the straw to make the brick. And, um, the Lord hasn't delivered them and they're upset with Moses at this point. And Moses doesn't really know what to say to them. So he goes to the Lord and he's like, Lord, you told me to come and tell that. <laughs> Moses was like, 
See, that's why I didn't want to do this. You told me to come and tell the people that to to let that you were going to let them go, to tell Pharaoh to let them go. But God did say that he's not going to do it. He's going to have to do all these wonders. But when you're in the moment, when you're there and it's happening, you, you really don't know how to react. You're like, I am sure that the Lord has told me to come. Remember the snake and the it turned and the leper skin and the, and like all these signs but all they can see is that pharaoh is making it even harder on them and that their work has gotten even worse since moses comes and tells them uh uh to let to, tells pharaoh to let the people go so um uh, uh, verse 10 through 13 um uh, of chapter 5 the Lord tells Moses to go back and tell Pharaoh to let the people go again. <laughs> but the, of course, Moses is lost heart because at this point, it's just been all talk. And so I'm from St. Louis, the Show Me State. So it's like, um, uh, well, the Show Me State is actually Missouri. So the whole state is, uh, <laughs> is, is, is known as the Show Me State. So you can show me better than you could tell me. And so... Um, uh, I get what, what Moses is saying. Like, you're not showing up. Where are these signs? I guess he thought that it would be immediately and that they wouldn't have to go through it because the Lord didn't say that I'm going to let him uh, think that he has the one up. The Lord said that he was going to harden his heart to move, remove himself from his heart and that he was going to have to show him all these hard signs. But he, he didn't say... Uh, the, and, you know, the people are going to have to suffer a little bit before I, I show these signs. And so uh, Moses is reluctant to go back. So verses uh, 14 through 17, uh, there's a break in scripture. So they're given a genealogy of uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, uh, the lineage up to Moses and Aaron. And now you're seeing that they are coming from the line of Levi, uh, the, uh, the Levitical line, the Levites. And verses 28 through 30, uh, Moses still thinks that Pharaoh uh, won't listen to him. That is how uh, chapter 5. Wait, one second. No, that is chapter 6. I'm so well, I described sorry. it the first time was so good. So I'm just going to clar clarify where I messed up with breaking the chapter division. So chapter five covers that they go to Pharaoh and um, they take the straw. Uh, Pharaoh takes the straw and the people are asking, uh, or I'm sorry, the people are making the task harder. And um, uh, Moses cries out to, to God because it seems that God uh, di uh, is, isn't going to free the people. And then we switch to chapter 6. And in chapter 6, 1 through 9, the Lord replies to Moses of what to tell the people that they'll be free and that they will dwell in the promised land that is flowing with milk and honey. But they don't believe him because um, of the harsh burdens that Pharaoh has placed on them. Uh chapter 6 verses 10 through 13 the lord tells moses to go back and tell pharaoh to let the people go again uh and this is moses he's lost heart at this point in time uh because it's been all talk and then that's when i i kind of I, I went over into the second chapter because i was talking about that i was from st louis and the show me it better than the show me state and you know it's better show, you can show me better than you can tell me uh uh and then verses 14 through 27 uh that is where you have the break in the genealogy so it's chapter six uh but i i, I skipped on ahead and i'm sorry about that so this is a, a clarification of it so verses 14 through 27 is from chapter six the break in the genealogy of the lineage of moses and aaron tied to the tribe of levi and verses 28 through 30 moses still thinks uh that pharaoh won't listen to him uh, and that is how it ends um so we have to uh, wait to come back till next time to see what, uh, what what's going to take place because we do know that uh, God is going to keep his word. He is a, uh, he can't break his word. That is one of his attributes. He does not lie. Um, so uh, we do know that what he, he says is going to come true, but oftentimes when God tells somebody something, it doesn't happen the way that we think. Like with Abraham and Sarah, he's like, I'm gonna give you the seed of promise. 
but they didn't think that because she, she's older she's like well maybe it's going to be through you know my maid servant so she gives him to um abraham to bear the child but guys like nope that's not sarah sarah's going to be the one to have the baby and so it oftentimes doesn't seem uh the way that we 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 want it to go the journey is always different um but the outcome that god tells you um or tells the, the the people of israel is going to happen it is going to happen that way and so um that is pretty much it for um chapters four through six sorry about the little mix-up because i was kind of jumping ahead because in my mind the the, uh, the the story was going a certain way because you get so used to reading scripture you kind of know what's going to happen and then you forget those little uh, uh small details that the lord sent them back and then the that moses didn't want to go and i missed um where i had the uh chapter six because i missed you guys because i wrote here Oh, I kind of scratched out through the through the sixth line because I have like all these notes and stuff that I go through. So sorry about that again. Um, uh, thank you for coming to study through scripture with me. I really appreciate it. Uh, may, and uh, I hope to see you again next time. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and bring you peace both now and forevermore.